Fresnel effect is one of my favorite light effects. Here's how it works. Can you see the rocks on the floor of this lake close to us? Can you also see how the further out in the lake you look, the less you can see through the water and the more you can see the reflection of the sky on top of the water. This is a result of the Fresnel effect. 3D programs can calculate the Fresnel effect and you can turn it on or off. So on the left it's been turned off and on the right it's been turned on. In the right image you can see that as the reflection gets closer to the cube it is more visible, it's more contrasty, it's sharper. That's all the Fresnel effect. It's not about the distance of the reflection to the object, it's about the angle of your line of sight. So here's a person looking at that cube. The line of sight that's going to a point on the floor that is close to the feet of this person has a steep angle relative to the floor. A line of sight that is going to a point on the floor that's further away from the person creates a much shallower angle. The shallower this angle is, the stronger the reflection that we perceive. The steeper that angle is, the weaker the reflection that is perceived. Here's a real-world example I noticed the other day. As I lower the camera angle, you can see the reflection of the pot show up more and more clearly. And then as I raise the angle, the reflection becomes less and less visible. I think that's pretty cool and pretty useful to know. We've looked at specular reflection and diffuse reflection, and how most materials are a combination of these two. If we have a shiny material, like this green sphere on the right, and we turn Fresnel off, it looks something like this. If we turn it back on, it looks like this. And there are two effects that are most noticeable. One is around the outside contour of my sphere, which is where the reflection is getting stronger as a result of the Fresnel effect. And the second noticeable effect is towards the center of my sphere, which is where the reflection is getting weaker. So here's the center, and here's the contour. Another example is this robot here, without Fresnel first, and then with Fresnel. I'll go back and forth a few times so you can see the reflection of the environment in the surface of the robot when we are rendering the Fresnel effect correctly. Adding the Fresnel effect to your images creates a huge boost in realism and believability. Here's a painting by my friend Sadie Valeri, beautifully rendered and really capturing the Fresnel effect. And here a painting by one of my favorite still life painters, Emil Carlson. You see how the reflection of the apple that's closer to the center of the jug is weaker, and the reflection of the apple that is closer to the edge of the jug is stronger. Again, a result of the Fresnel effect. I'd like to do a little demo now of turning this matte egg into a shiny egg using the Fresnel effect. This method is not completely physically accurate, but it's a really good shorthand, it's a really good approach or technique. So what I'll do is pick the color just outside or behind my object, and then paint it into the edge of my egg. So where the environment or background is gray, I'll paint gray, and where the environment or background is blue, I will paint blue. And I'll make an effort to create this smooth gradient, this fall off of the reflection being strongest on the edges and then getting weaker and weaker towards the center of the form where my line of sight is at a 90 degree angle, at a right angle to the surface. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much, so I'll tone it down. And then to finish, of course, important, the specular reflection of the light source. And I found that specular reflections, the reflections of the light source, are usually so strong, so powerful, so bright, that they're not really affected by the Fresnel effect. But here you have a matte egg that has become a shiny egg. I hope this is helpful, and I wish you 
fun to apply this new knowledge of the Fresnel effect in your own work.